Hi, Dr. Dave here with 10 great tips to help you with your speed control. First, when looking at view data for my recent video, I noticed that many of my viewers are not channel subscribers. If you have enjoyed or benefited from any of my past videos and don't want to miss any in the future, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. Also check out my catalog of over 400 existing videos and watch some that you might not have seen yet. I have a good collection of playlists if you want to brush up on a particular topic. Okay, let's get back to business. The only way to develop and improve your speed control is through practice and experience, but it can also help to understand some basic principles and effects. First, with a stun shot, where the cue ball is sliding with no top or bottom spin at the object ball, with a straight shot, the cue ball stops in place and delivers all of its speed to the object ball. This is called a stop shot. With a 45 degree cut angle stun shot, the cue ball and object ball head at the same angles, and the speeds and travel distances are equal. Here's a 9 ball safety example where this type of shot is very useful. I created distance between the cue ball and the three and hid them from each other for an effective safety. With a stun shot, the percentage or fraction of speed the cue ball loses when hitting the object ball is the same as the ball hit fraction. Obviously, when the ball hit fraction is zero, the cue ball loses no speed. With a quarter ball hit, the cue ball loses only a quarter of its speed when it hits the object ball. And with a half ball hit, the cue ball loses half of its speed. The cue ball loses three quarters of its speed with a three quarter ball hit. And with a full ball hit, the cue ball loses all of its speed. Here's a good example illustrating the basic concept. With a big cut angle or small ball hit fraction like this, you don't need much stroke speed to get shape on the eight. Did you notice the cut induced spin on the shot? I hit the cue ball dead center, but it picked up a little right spin when I cut the object ball to the left. With a small cut angle or large ball hit fraction like this, you need much more stroke speed to get shape. With a rolling cue ball, the ball speeds and distances are the same at a little less than a half ball hit, which is slightly more than a 30 degree cut angle. And as with the 45 degree cut stun shot, the balls separate at the same angles. This is useful to know for a slow roll equal separation safety like this. If a rolling cue ball hits an object ball squarely, the object ball will travel about seven times as far as the cue ball after impact. This number can vary some with ball and cloth conditions, so be sure to test it out on your table. The balls travel different distances at different speeds, but the object ball always travels seven times the distance of the cue ball, neglecting cushion rebound losses. Because this relationship is constant, it is relatively easy to learn follow distance control with a little practice. Here's a good example where precision follow is required to get shape on the 8. For a rolling ball shot, to help achieve good speed and distance consistency, it is best to hit the cue ball at about 20% of the radius above the center. This is what it looks like at the table. This is the tip height you should use for a lag shot. With a lag shot, you always want to try to hit the second cushion. I know, my table isn't level. I've been procrastinating getting this fixed. Hitting the second cushion slows the cue ball, giving you a greater margin for error with shot speed. I hit this shot a little fast, but the cue ball still stops close to the rail. With a similar error in speed on the slow side, the cue ball ends up much farther from the rail. Again, with a lag shot, try to reach the second cushion for better results. Probably the most useful speed control advice is to vary your stroke length in proportion to the speed you want. Smooth acceleration over increasing distances creates increasing speeds. It's like a car accelerator. The longer you hold down the pedal, the faster the car goes. Here are follow shots of increasing stroke length to control the follow speed. I am using the same tip position for each of these shots.
Now I will do the same for draw, again using the same tip position for each shot. I am using a longer bridge length here so I can create a wider range of stroke lengths and shot speeds. I use the same non-rushed and smoothly accelerating stroking style for each stroke length. Another important tip is to make sure you accelerate into the ball and finish your stroke. Don't decelerate like this. This will make it very difficult to control cue ball speed accurately and consistently. Instead, accelerate smoothly through the ball. With finesse shots, don't use a long stroke and try to push the cue forward with a constant speed. You will generally have much better control with a short, smoothly accelerating stroke. With a short stroke length, you can use a shorter bridge length to help prevent a longer stroke if necessary. This can also help reduce stroking error if your stroke is not very straight. Now let's look at some important pattern and position play speed control principles. When possible, you want to try to avoid crossing the line of the next shot. Crossing the line reduces your margin for error with shot speed, especially if you are crossing the narrow part of the shape zone. The cue ball must stop within a very small area to have a shot at the 8 next. It is too easy to come up short. Or to go too long. Instead, try to come into the line of the 8. This will give you a much larger margin for error with shot speed. Another important pattern play strategy is to try to minimize cue ball motion. If the cue ball doesn't move very much, it is much easier to predict the final position more accurately. If the cue ball travels a longer distance, especially off cushions, it is much more difficult to be accurate and consistent with distance and direction. As before, another option here is to come into the line of the shot. Another useful cue ball control technique is to use side spin to help increase or decrease the cue ball speed off cushions. Here, I am using running spin to easily send the cue ball around the table. And here, I am using reverse spin to help hold the cue ball. Another important position control principle is to use the rails as your friends. Don't try to finesse shots like this. I barely held the cue ball enough to get a shot at the 8, but it is very easy to overrun shots like this. I know I said earlier it is best to limit cue ball travel, but in a situation like this, it is much better to go off the bottom cushion. Because the cushion slows the cue ball by about half, this gives you twice the margin for error with shot speed. It also helps to go into the wider part of the shape zone, where you have a larger margin for error. If you head into the narrow part of the shape zone, the margin for error is much smaller. Now let's look at some drills that can help you develop and improve your speed consistency and control. The simplest drill is to hit the cue ball down the table to different target distances. Vary your stroke length for the distance you want and hit the cue ball 20% above its center for the best control. Again, I know, my table is not level. Don't worry, I'll get this fixed soon when I get a new cloth installed. If you land within a diamond on either side of your target, consider that good. As you increase the speed to come off cushions, you will need to add much more speed to get the desired distance since the cushions absorb energy. Here's a good drill to test your finesse speed control and consistency. Set up 10 balls across the head string and hit them in order straight up the table, sending each only far enough to pass the previous ball. The goal is to hit as many balls as you can before reaching the end cushion. Start by hitting the one as softly as possible. I started out pretty good, then I hammered the eight ball, but I recovered nicely with the nine and 10. This drill is tougher than you might think. After the 10, bring balls back to continue. I was able to hit 12 before reaching the end cushion, which is pretty good. How many can you get? Keep track of your scores to see how you improve over time. 
To master the speed control required in most game situations, it helps to practice speed control for a wide range of shot types. The Billiard University Playing Ability Exams contain some excellent drills for position play speed control. Drills F2 through F5 and F8 in BU Exam 1 and drill S5 in BU Exam 2 will test and help you develop and improve your skills. Again, track your drill scores to see how you improve over time. The first drill tests stop shot control. The second tests follow distance control. The third tests precision draw control. The fourth tests precision stun shot speed control. The target drill tests and helps you practice cut shot position play control. This is a very important skill to develop and improve if you want to play at a high level. Here's another fun target drill version from the video encyclopedia of pool practice that provides more variability to simulate a wider range of game situations. You use a deck of cards to randomize the cue ball, object ball, and target positions to give you a wide range of practice. The final BU speed control drill involves safety shots where you need to hide the cue ball from the object ball or vice versa, using the cluster of balls as blockers. The various cue ball positions provide a wide range of interesting shots to practice. Details and video demonstrations for all of these drills can be found on the BU website and in VEP, both of which are linked in the video description. Drills are helpful, but the only true way to develop excellent speed control intuition and skill is through years of play under a wide range of conditions. So get to the table and start practicing, and play as much as you can. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.